Hi, I'm Jonathan Hall, and I am no efforting again for November. Today, I want to talk about how to download private repositories for your Go project. I imagine many of you have experienced the exhilarating thrill of joining a brand new team. You're so excited to get started, and you run Go Get or Go Run, and then this happens. What are you doing there? This is private property. Well, now that's embarrassing, but what can you do about it? So there are two ways to solve this problem, and I'll talk about both of them in this video, and I'll talk about which situations each version applies to. I'll have links, of course, in the description to fuller descriptions of each of the topics I'm talking about, or even the commands I'm typing. I'll put those in the links in the description for your easy reference. So let's get started. Now, regardless of which of the two approaches you end up using, you need to do one thing in common in both cases, and that is you need to set your go private environment variable. The go private variable contains a list of patterns that are checked against package names. And any package name that matches this variable will not be fetched via the public go cache server. So obviously a private module like the one we're dealing with is not going to be available on the public server. So that's why you need to include it here. So in, in this particular uh, example on my screen, uh, I've set up a simple test uh, program. It doesn't do anything useful. Uh, all it does is call the single uh, function in that private package at github.com slash flimsy slash private. That's my private repository that I need to get access to. Uh, so once it's working, we should see something useful rather than an annoying error message. So go private. Uh, in this case, I'm going to set it to the full module name that is private. So that is github.com slash flimsy slash private. And you can put multiple packages here, all comma separated if you want to. If you're doing this for your entire company, uh, suppose you have your company has an entire group on GitHub, you might do github.com slash my company. You can also, if you have a private hosted GitHub or GitLab or other uh, Git resource, you could do something like star.company.com slash GoDaps or whatever your path is, right? So you can uh, have wildcards in there. Again, link to full description of that in the comments. For my case, I'm just doing the simple version with my own repository. Now, it's important, of course, that you export this. You can also control these uh, sorts of things through the go env command directly. Minus w is to write the value. All right, that's it about go private. Now let's talk about the two different ways that you can actually get access to a private repository. The first one is going to be generally the simplest to use on your local development machine, and that is to configure Git to use SSH rather than HTTP. Yes, I have an SSH key in my house written down. By default, when you run go get, it will use HTTP or HTTPS to try to fetch dependencies. We can configure it to use SSH, though, for these particular modules we care about, and then it will use the SSH keys you already have stored and configured for GitHub, for example, or GitLab or, or Bitbucket. I could do that by editing the git config file directly, or I can do it from the command line. I'm going to do it from the command line. I think it's a little bit easier and less likely to typo uh, the config file. And I'll have a copy of this command for you in the description. Now, if I dump out my git config file, we'll see the additional entry it made at the end. This one right here. You could just manually type that in if you want. But what this does is it tells git when it's ready to fetch a URL that begins with this to replace this string with this string. So it should switch to using SSH rather than HTTPS. Let's see if it works. It does. We found the secret message and it has executed the function in my private package. Success. So when would this not work and why would you want to use the alternate method, which we'll talk about in a moment. So basically this approach I just showed you is best when you're using it on your local development machine where you already have SSH keys configured. You generally do not use SSH keys to talk to GitHub when you're running inside of a CI environment. So this approach would be cumbersome at best and possibly very insecure uh, in a CI environment. So you want something else. There's also a corner case with GitLab if you're using subgroups. Uh, this will be the only way that you can uh, do private repos, and that's for a security reason that I'm not going to get into. Um, I actually have an answer on Stack Overflow that talks about it. 
I'll have a link to that in the description as well. If you're really interested in digging into the why, you can go read up on that. Suffice it to say that if you're using GitLab subgroups for private repos, or you're configuring your CI uh, to download private repos, uh, this next uh, option is for you. Now, the next option is a little bit more involved. You need to create an API key. Uh, and depending on which Git service you're using, you have a few different options. Uh, for GitHub, the easiest to demonstrate is to create a personal access token. So let me show you how that works. All right, so here I am on the page to create a personal access token. Let me just do that quickly. And I'm going to give it access to only a single repository. And then I need to specify my permissions. I think I just need to give it read access to the content. I think that's all I need to create that token. Now, the important thing I need, of course, is this key right here. I can copy that. Uh, so if you're doing this yourself, if you're doing this for continuous integration purposes, you probably aren't using a personal access token. Uh, you're probably creating one for your organization. Um, but hopefully you understand what you need, uh, given your context. If your solution is to work with GitLab subgroups, a personal access token is perfectly fine. Just follow the instructions on GitLab to do the same. Now with this API key in hand, we're ready to edit or create a file called .netrc in your home directory. Now we just need to create a very simple entry for this. I'll show you what it looks like, but all we're basically doing is telling it for a given host, here's the username and the password to use for that host. So the machine name is the, the host for the Git service, which in my case, in this example, is github.com. The login name is my GitHub username, so that's what it is. And then the password is the token I just created, so I'll pay, paste that in here. Now before I did this run, I cleaned my cache, I deleted my old configuration uh, so that uh, it will only work if my new configuration is working. Ooh, I love purging. I purge you, I purge you, I purge you, I purge you, I purge, 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 purge. So let's verify that it's working. So there you have it. Two different ways that you can fetch a private repository using GoGet. Now, one last comment I want to make uh, in reference to my previous video on vendoring. One of the comments I got on that video was that vendoring in Go can be a handy way to help ease some of the pain that I've just talked about in this video. If you don't want to be bothered to configure CI to do this, or you can't be bothered, maybe uh, there's security implications at your company that prevent you from doing everything I just described in your CI environment. Or maybe you have some developers who only infrequently use your Go code, and they don't want to have to go to the effort of configuring everything I just talked about. If you vendor those dependencies, then they don't have to worry about that. That does mean that anybody who's downloaded the vendored uh, dependencies and has not done this configuration I've talked about will not be able to update those private dependencies. But that's often not a concern. It's certainly not a concern in a CI environment. And it's maybe not a concern for some of the people using your code. So if that applies to you, that might be another reason that I didn't cover in my previous video to vendor your Go code. Well, I think that's it. So if you learned something, I hope you'll hit the like button. And if you are new to the channel, I hope you'll hit subscribe and stick around for some new videos as they come out later on. My eyes are getting dry. Ah.